This is a beer that I brewed specifically to put into a barrel. It's a 10% Belgian quad, but the style of the beer really isn't what's important. What is important is that it's finally ready to be put into this barrel right here. So I'm only showing you guys all the steps that I take to properly barrel each beer, including how to put it into the barrel, when to know when it's done aging in the barrel, and what to do with it once it's finished. First up, make sure you take every single part that you're gonna use today and put it in a no rinse sanitizer. Next, you're gonna to need to get this barrel open. So you're gonna take a screw with a screwdriver or a drill and you're gonna get it right on in there. Then afterwards, you're gonna take a hammer and with a little bit of force, you should be able to pop that thing right off. Afterwards, you're gonna sanitarily purge this barrel with CO2. See, there's oxygen in the barrel. And while you're gonna get a little bit of oxygen during the barrel aging process because it's going to permeate through the wood, you wanna minimize that as much as possible as oxygen and finished beer can sometimes lead to off flavors. So after purging for about 10 minutes at five PSI, this barrel's ready to fill. So I was actually able to get this barrel pretty fresh about a month after it had been emptied. But if you're not able to get a fresh barrel, make sure that you're properly rehydrating it with whatever spirit it came from, either rum, gin, or whiskey because if you're going to add water to it, not only will you be diluting it, but adding oxygen to the beer, while the spirit will actually give it a bit more flavor, a bit more alcohol, and help properly sanitize the barrel. So this is my barrel wand. It allows me to fill the barrel from the bottom up so I can reduce splashing and potential oxygen pickup. Now, if you're a home brewer, you're probably gonna be using an auto siphon, which is perfectly fine. It does the exact same job. This is just something that professional brewers use because it's stainless and sanitary. So let's spray some ISO on it and get it on in there so we can start filling. Now I've got my sight glass here so that I can see if it starts to get yeasty or chunky or anything like that. And then I've got my valve here so that I can control the flow. You want it to be very slow. That way, like I said, you're not getting a whole lot of breakout. Any sort of splashing is gonna cause the beer to potentially foam up. Small note, this beer is flat. Make sure that when you barrel age your beer and you're filling it up, that this beer is not already carbonated. You should be taking it pretty much straight from the fermenter after it's been crashed out for a little bit of time. You're not gonna get breakout. You're not gonna get CO2 coming out of solution as you're trying to fill it. Also, this is gonna be sitting fairly warm. So that CO2 would even break out more and you would lose so much beer. So once that barrel's nice and full, you're gonna take what's called a rubber bung from your no rinse sanitizer and then you're gonna take that and put that into what's called the bung hole. I'm not joking, that's a real word, on your barrel. And once you've sealed it up, it's good to go and ready to age. So the next question you might be asking is, how long do I barrel age my beer? And the unfortunate reality is there isn't really a good answer to that. See, every beer style is different and every barrel is different. Sometimes you're gonna get light beers that are gonna pick up flavor in the barrel very quickly and then you're gonna get very thick, dark beers that are gonna pick up flavor in the barrel very slowly. On top of that, you've got things that are bourbon, rum, gin. Depending on how long those were in the barrel or how flavorful the spirit was, it can come out completely differently in a barrel. And the unfortunate reality is there is just no good answer to say, how long should I age my beer? So what I can tell you is that it's up to you to figure out when the beer is done barrel aging. See, around the six month mark is when I've had the most success with beers getting the flavor that I want from barrels. So start around there and then taste it every month incrementally until you get the flavors that you like in your beer and then take it out of the barrel. And you might be asking, well, how do I do that? How do I taste it while it's still in the barrel? And that's what I'm about to show you. So here's one way that you can use to sample your barrel. See, what I've got right here is a sterile single use syringe that I got off Amazon. And you can just take the bung off, go ahead and get in there, get your sample, and there you go. Put it right back on, make sure it's all sanitary and good to go. But I've got two problems with this. One, every time you lift up that bung, you're exposing this barrel to more oxygen, which can be a big detriment to the beer. And two, with barrels like this big, that are about 53 gallons to start, by the time you actually wanna start sampling them, they've evaporated most of the beer, sometimes to about 45 gallons. So this syringe just isn't big enough for me to get on in there and get a sample from. So I'm gonna show you an alternative to get a sample from your barrel. And while it's a bit more work, it is the method that I use. So this is the barley wine that I've been aging for about six months at this point, and I need to get a sample from this. So let me show you how to use the method I was just talking about. So here are the tools that you're gonna to need to do this method. First, a pair of nails, preferably stainless steel, a pair of adjustable vice grips, a propane torch or some other torch that can heat up your nail, a hammer, 
and isopropyl alcohol or some other sanitizing agent. You're gonna heat up the nail with your torch until it's nice and hot and glowing. Then you're gonna spray it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to not only sterilize it, but also cool it down a little bit. Then you're gonna hammer it into the barrel until it's nice and deep, but just a little bit of space so you can then pull that nail out of the barrel later on. Afterwards, you're gonna use those adjustable vice grips to pull out the nail, get a sample from your barrel, spray that nail with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and then put that right back into the barrel. And there you have it, there's your sample. You've sterilely collected a sample while not exposing the barrel to oxygen. So let's see how this barley wine tastes. Pretty good color. It's actually darkened up a little bit since I put it in the barrel. Very good notes of raisin. Very sweet, good notes of oak, a lot of raisin character. It's actually turning out pretty great. Now, I want a bit more vanilla in this and I want it to be a bit more oaky. So I'm gonna probably let that age for another month, two or three and taste it incrementally until I get the flavors that I want. Now, this isn't bad. If I served this right now, I'd actually probably be pretty happy with it, but I still think you can develop more flavors. But what if it was ready? What would I do next? And that brings us to our next step, which is taking it out of the barrel. See, this tool right here is called a bulldog. And in conjunction with that barrel wand that you saw earlier, you're able to pressurize your barrel and then push the liquid out into your tank. And if you're a home brewer, you're probably not gonna have to worry about something like this. Instead, you're probably just gonna be taking your barrel and upending it into your keg or using an auto siphon. But make sure you're using something like a strainer because there's always gonna be little bits of charcoal left at the bottom of that barrel and you need to make sure that doesn't end up in the finished product. And at that point, the beer is pretty much ready to drink. You've already tasted it and gotten the flavors that you like. You cut out a couple other things like vanilla or cacao nibs or coconut or something like that, but it honestly only needs to be carbonated and it's ready to serve. And what you end up with is a little something like this. Cheers. Delicious. So let me know in the comments what beer you decided to barrel age. And if you learned a little something, well, learn a little more. And check out this video right here. And don't forget to subscribe.